I think what you see happening here is there's kind of a, a bifurcation where you have Uber really becoming platform conglomerate status, tech monopoly status. So let's dive into the, the Uber versus Lyft situation here. First off, if I was to just show you two charts, one chart here is, um, so they both release earnings around August 6th or August 7th. So if you kind of look in the middle of this chart, uh, you see a spike on the 7th. So, so Lyft had a more positive response from the market after coming out with their earnings. And then here's Uber. Um, you see that I think they came out the day after, so they were also up and then, and then it went down. But, you know, if you kind of look what's happened in the past couple of weeks since then, it's kind of the same chart. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Um, so why is that? Right. So basically Lyft was able to beat on, on growth and revenue expectations. Um, Lyft does not report GMV. Uber does report GMV. Lyft just reports their revenue, which in the past I've talked about how I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I'm a fan of much more transparency. And I think Lyft long term is doing that because they're reticent about disclosing that where Uber does. And Uber is obviously the much more dominant player in ride sharing um, in the US. Now, let's dive a little bit deeper here. So Uber's gross bookings uh, grew at 37% to about $15.75 billion. So that's gross GMV across all the stuff they're doing globally. It was expected to be $15.83 billion. Okay, so they they missed it by like $80 million. Okay, compared to Lyft, Lyft had, um, let's see here, 62% uh, revenue growth. So they had... Uh, they expected revenue, they upped their revenue guidance by a few hundred million dollars. So all in their annual revenue, they're expecting to be around 3.47 to $3.5 billion. Um, the, the prior expectation was around $3.3 billion. So it basically went from 3.3 to 3.5 on an annual revenue basis. Okay, $3.5 billion. Uber's single quarter revenue okay, grew at 26% to $2.87 billion, right? So basically, Uber's doing $2.87, $2.9 billion in revenue in one quarter. Lyft is saying we expect to do about $3.5 billion over the next entire year. There are our, our full revenue for 2019, okay? <clears throat> Let's look at another thing, their market cap. Let's look at the valuation. So Lyft is current market cap today is about $15 billion. <clears throat> Uber is at $60 billion, okay? So you're kind of saying, okay, let me do the math here. Yeah, I mean, Uber kind of has 4X the revenue um, of Lyft, okay? Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Um, you could also say, well, you know, I don't know what, what Lyft's GMV is because they're not disclosing it anymore. Um, but Uber has massive GMV, right? Close to $16 billion in GMV. So it makes sense to me why the market responded more positively to Lyft because Lyft was able to beat the expectation on growth. And, and Uber's revenue also missed the expectation on revenue growth. It was still a lot, 26%, but the market expected more. Um, it wasn't a big miss, but it was still a miss nonetheless. And particularly when these companies, these younger public platform companies, I think the market values their ability to beat on growth much more so than their ability to beat on earnings, um, which is clearly the case. They're both losing money. But if the growth, top line growth is slowing, then that's much more concerning to the market. And that makes sense because these are high growth platform business models supposed to be winner take all, right? Um, here is why I'm more bullish on Uber long term. If you just look at where they're at today and you say Uber is worth 4x Lyft and you say, OK, I don't know. You know, let's say um, Uber is doing 4x revenue, roughly a little like three and a half, three point seven five x revenue of what Lyft is doing today. The problem with that is that Uber is in is a global company. Um, Uber is in multiple platform models. 
So they're not just in ride sharing in the U.S. They're in now the food delivery space in the U.S. They're in food delivery in Europe. They're obviously in ride sharing in Europe. Actually, in their earnings, they just said that you know they're actually crushing the top five cities in Germany. So they are making huge entryways into other markets in ride sharing. Um, as they were doing in China, and then they sold that off to DD, which is the um, you know Chinese version of Uber, um, and that was widely profitable and accretive for Uber. The investments they made in ride sharing in China. So here's the thing: if this is a winner take all market, and you say to yourself, "I don't know what the split is going to be in the U.S. on ride sharing, Uber versus Lyft." Let's say the split is. Conservative. Let's say Lyft and Uber split the market 50 50. And you say, okay, well, then if, um, if Uber has um, double the value of Lyft on the ride sharing mar- market, um, <clears throat> you know, how is Uber justifying a 4x uh, market cap? But the problem is that the market isn't being split 50 50. And Uber actually has a much larger share of ride sharing just in the United States. So let's say they split this thing 70-30. And then you start to layer in the food delivery. And then you start to layer in the fact that they're also in a dominant position in other ride sharing markets internationally. And then you start to line up these numbers and say, is it really just a four to one? Is it just really, you know, the market cap should be four to one because the revenue is almost four to one. Um, and I don't think so. I think what you see happening here is there's kind of a, a, a bifurcation where you have Uber really becoming platform conglomerate status, tech monopoly status. You've got Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, FAMGA, right? Absolutely tech monopolies. Who's the sixth tech monopoly that I, th- that I think is going to be added to that? that gang of five, soon to be gang of six, I think it's Uber. I think it's Ufamga. I mean, they are really setting themselves up for long-term domination in multiple platform models on multiple continents. Um, And I don't think that that simple calculation is just a four-to-one calculation. Um, That doesn't mean... That Lyft is undervalued at $15 billion. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying between the two, long term, who do I see outperforming where they're valued at today? Lyft could still outperform and still have plenty of upside. But between the two, when I look at how the network effects of this business are being captured and the fragmentation and the lock-in, Uber's talking about Uber Rewards, which we were talking about, right? Uber came out with Uber Rewards months months before Lyft. They just have a bigger balance sheet. They're more heavily capitalized. They've got a bigger team. They can execute more quickly with the right management, which I think Dara is an excellent CEO. And now they're getting really tight lock-in on Uber Rewards. Hi, this is Alex Mozed. Thanks for joining us on Winner Take All. If you enjoyed the content today, which I bet you did, please comment, subscribe, and definitely message me on Twitter when we're doing live streams. Also, please note, all opinions expressed about stocks or public companies on the show are exactly that, opinions. This is not investment advice. Don't act on it. Wisdom Tree licensed Applico's Platform Insights data product to aid in the creation of the Plat ETF. Thanks for joining us.